And we're back in studio for episode number two. Yes, episode number two. We did not get canceled. We are back for our second edition of Pacific Indians Chatter here on the Pacific Sports Network. I'm joined by Scott Brown, and of course, I'm Cody Kelly. And on today, we will start off with our Riverbend Roundup as soon as I bring in my co-host so we can talk about how it's so nice to be back for episode number two. Yeah, I guess we did a couple things right last segment. We had several downloads. We hope to get a few more for this segment, number two, and um, talk about some more Indian sports. And with that, let's jump right out to Riverbend. They had a busy week this week. The boys' basketball teams at Riverbend are finishing up the regular season this past week. They both took on the St. Clair Bulldogs and the Union Wildcats. And the eighth graders continue to build upon their perfect regular season at 13-0. They picked up two wins. The first win was 54-18 over St. Clair. Gage Clark, 19 points, four blocks. We'll talk about him a little bit later in the show. Seth Stack pitched in with 21, had five boards and three steals, and Caden Holman had six points versus the Bulldogs. In the second win for the eighth grade, they beat a very good Union Wildcat team. I think that's been one of their main competitors this year. They won 40 to 29. Gage Clark with 14 points and eight boards. Stack pitched in with 14 points and eight boards. He also had four steals. And this impressive regular season um, brings back memories, um, Cody, of a couple of Van Leer boys that uh, had very nice records in middle school. I think the last team to go undefeated in eighth grade also went undefeated in seventh grade, 32-0, and I think back in 2013-14. That was Cameron Van Leer's group. Yeah, both those groups were really good when they came through middle school. I think one loss between four seasons for them. Yeah, that was some good basketball, and I can still hear them in the back of my mind today arguing about which team was better because uh, that comes up quite often in the Van Leer house. I'm sure it's still a normal argument there. <laughs> I'm not picking sides either. Uh, both teams were great, but I will say that Cameron Van Leer's team, like you noted earlier, did win a district title, So, but I'm not going to pick. Uh, the seventh graders continue to show improvement. They end the regular season at 4-9, and nine, and when tryouts were first held before the season, this team was very inexperienced. They had a lot of kids that had never played competitive basketball, and Coach Corey Cowsard has done a wonderful job um, developing this group, not just with a couple of kids, but there's three or four of them that are starting to, to play good basketball for the Indians. Their um, first... Contest was a big win, 42-16 to over St. Clair. Rowan Herman pinched in 22 points. Logan Hoffman had 8 points. And Landon Lineberry pitched in with 6. They also got a win to complete the 2-0 week over Union, 35-19. to Herman with 13, Hoffman with 11. And Coach Cowsard also notes that Wyatt Grimm and Brody Covert have had a big breakout week doing a lot of the dirty work for the 7th grade Indians, diving on the floor, playing intense, playing sound defense, and every team needs to have those glue guys that do that on a nightly basis if they're going to win. So they're showing a lot of improvement, and both of these teams head towards an off-season of skill work after they finish their tournaments next week as the 8th graders try to finish that undefeated season. They go to Sullivan. I'm sorry, the the seventh graders go to Sullivan. They got the sixth seed against St. James. And the eighth graders are playing in the St. Clair tournament where they are the number one seed. They play Monday night against New Haven. So great season finishing up for our Riverbend basketballers. Yeah, and to move on outside of basketball, we have a new sport getting ready to start. Riverbend volleyball tryouts start Tuesday. The seventh and eighth grade team were coached by Janelle Brown and Chris Carrico. Uh, it's a short season. The program looks to rebuild on the heels of the high school success. The high school obviously coming off of a district title this year. Um, the games are going to be in March and April, so we'd like to see people out there to support the volleyball team. Yeah, the Brown House gets pretty busy when volleyball starts and we get into high school baseball and our kids are running around as well. But get out and watch a game. The volleyball program also, you can see a big improvement from tryouts until their last uh, couple games. 
And then, too, just a quick note here as we move on. Not really a quick note, but a shout-out is good luck to Coach Calder and the cheer squad as they're performing in Dallas this weekend at Nationals. The team left Thursday and was traveling all the way down for hopefully a very memorable weekend. Yeah, good luck to Coach Cowser and her squad. I know they work really hard, and this is kind of a big payoff at the end of their season. Yeah. And now as we segue over to high school sports, we'll jump to the wrestling side. Before we get into wrestling, just would like to note that head coach Jesse Knott will be our guest today on the podcast, so stay tuned for that at the end. Uh, this week, the wrestling the boys got a big conference duel win over Union 40-30. to The girls fell to Union. Uh, Blake in the 113 weight class had a win. Martin in the 120 with a win. Flaherty, 126 weight class with a win. Brown in the 132 class with a win. Calvin, 195 with a win. Gerling, 220 and a win. And Naff, 285, picks up the wins. And on the girls' side, Zoe took care of business on the girls' side. Then they also had a quad matchup. At Pri I believe it was at Priory against Priory, Orchard Farms, and Windsor. Some decent schools as far as wrestling goes. Uh, they were shorthanded a little bit. They ended the night 2-1. and one. Um, Martin, Flaherty, Tennyson, Calvin, Gerling, and Naff all finished 3-0. and oh. Stout and Reese 2-1. and one. And then on the girls' side of things, Zoe and Scarlett both finished 2-0. and oh. Yeah, the wrestlers have a, a big weekend coming up as well, I think, and you guys can touch on that, but uh, they continue to push towards their district district uh, match down in Farmington. Yeah, and senior night is January 25th for the wrestlers. Uh, just as we were saying that, we were actually shooting the show in Coach Grody's room right now. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Grody, for uh, letting us use your facilities today. Uh, let's move on to boys basketball. There were three varsity contests um, that we need to talk about. Last week, the Indians finished the week on a big note with um, a triple header sweep at Northwest House Springs. The varsity ended up winning 41-31. Jack Meyer had 10 points. Xavier Cox, a sophomore point guard, had eight. And Quinn Blackburn, Blackburn put up seven points, 11 boards, and eight blocks, pretty close to a triple-double. And the JV game. Nick Bukowski led the Indians to a big road win at Northwest. He knocked down three triples and played solid defense for Coach Hillhouse. And the freshman game. The freshman boys went 142-32 over Northwest. Bryce Brick, 14 points. Parker Linder, 8 points and 17 boards. They're Coach King's big men, and when they come to play, they can quite dominate a game. Blake Booker ended up with 14, and Hagen Hassel had four steals on the night. This Tuesday, the Varsity and JV Indians welcomed the Washington Blue Jays to town. In the Varsity contest, the Blue Jays had a pretty good night and beat the Indians 64-40. to They were pretty physical and big, and the Indians had a little trouble taking care of the basketball. Matt Rinke ended up with 10 points to lead the Indians against Washington on Tuesday. The JV was a competitive game. Coach Hillhouse's Indians lost 38-30. to um, Two good performances, Trey and C.J. Bibb for the JV were spark on both ends. The last game of the week, the varsity JV and the freshmen headed to Afton into South St. Louis, and the varsity boys took a loss to the Afton Cougars, 71 to 62. Big night for Quinn Blackburn, Blackburn though, 20 points, 13 boards, and four blocks. And uh, Quinn is second in the St. Louis area in rebounds at 12.4 a game, and he can flat dominate a game on the glass. Jack Meyer pitched in 12. He was four for four from three land. And Mr. Rinky had 13, and he went nine for 10 from the free throw line in the loss to Afton. The JV boys took on Afton and lost by double digits another night. They've had some struggle, tr struggle to score. And they played hard, according to Coach Hillhouse, but came out on the losing end in that one. The freshman boys were the lone winner against Afton that night with a 48-40 win over the Cougars. Parker Linder, 22 points, 9 boards. Booker with 9. Bryce Brick with 8 points and 8 boards. And Sam Gable pitched in 8 points. And Hagen Hassel had 6 assists. Um, the freshman defensive player of the week, according to Coach King, is Hagen Hassel. Every night he draws the other team's best guard or wing. He's excelling at loose balls and taking charges, which as being a former basketball coach, that's a 
big part of a good team, somebody that will step in and take a charge in a big moment. Next week is a very busy week for all three teams. The varsity enters the Union Tournament, and they play Borgia in the first round. Our Pacific JV Tournament starts on Wednesday next week. And our freshman tourney runs Monday through Thursday at Owensville. And that's what we had on the hardwood for the boys. And just a quick note, if you listened last week, we had the quote from Justin King that said that everything was looking good at practice. They were just having trouble getting it to translate to the court. It's starting to look like they've got it translated to the court now. On the girls' side of things, we start off, the girls were shorthanded this week as head coach uh, Melanie Missy had to enter COVID protocols. So they played Windsor on Wednesday night. Coach Miller stepped in. The girls dropped a tough one, 37 to 36. Molly Pritchard had nine points. Had some nice work in the 2-3 zone in the high post. Uh, the loss was a tough one. There was a foul called with no time left on the clock. I mean, it's one of those you don't like to see called because you kind of want to see the players play. Didn't see a lot of contact. I talked to one official about it that saw the foul. He said he would have never called it. He doesn't like to decide games like that. It's a tough loss. The girl hit the free throw. Windsor wins 37-36. Uh, the JV dropped that game, too, that night, 29-23 to Windsor. Trinity Brandhorst had eight points in limited action. And then Thursday night, they traveled to Liberty Wentzville. The girls came out on top 38-20. to They came out with a tough press that Wentzville just had no answer for. Abby Hall led the way with 17 points. On the JV side of things, JV lost 29-24 to Liberty. And as we record this now on Friday, the girls play Crystal City tonight at 5. Uh, we will try our best to add in an update from that game after that game takes place. Hopefully we'll be able to do that for you. Update from the Crystal City game. The Lady Indians take down Crystal City 47-2. The Indians were led by Shelby Kellerman with 11 points and Molly Pritchard with 10. Next week, the girls travel to Washington for the varsity tournament. Their opening game is against Parkway West on Monday night. The JV travels to Windsor for a tournament. That's seven basketball tournaments this week. This is January Madness coming up for all the basketball programs throughout our uh, school. Yeah, I, re I remember this week well. Um, it's, it's a real busy week for everybody. Getting home late, having to go get up in the morning, go to class, but... You know, if you're a basketball junkie, this is a fun fun time of year. Not a lot of time for practice. And no. as, as we get through that, let's jump into one of our favorite segments here on the show, and that is performance of the week. Time for our performances of the week. I can start us off this week. I am going to go with Abby Hall. She had 17 points last night and a big win against Liberty Winsville for the girls. But that's not even all. She had rebounds. She had turnover, or she had steals, forced turnover. Sorry, uh, she was just all over the place. So that's my performance of the week. Yeah, I uh, saw the games a little bit of two games on the um, they were on YouTube yeah, TV and uh, whole school said their she, channel. She's an athlete. She can move um, even on film. When a lot of people don't look super athletic, Abby Hall can flat out go get the basketball. Yeah, her, and she's fun to watch. Her and Lexi Clark are quick. Yes, the, the sophomore duo are going to be around for a few more years, and I can't wait to watch them some more. My performance of the week, I could have picked a couple of guys, but I, I got to give some love back to our Riverbend kids. Um, I've got to go with 6'4 wing Gage Clark, the eighth grader who has led the – Riverbend basketball team to their 13 and 0 regular season, and they're looking for that, you know, that undefeated season if they can win this last tournament. But he's a complete player. He's big. He's long. Um, very coachable kid. Super kid. Leads by example every day. He averaged 16 and a half points last week in both those games. Every night he pushes a double double, and I would imagine there's some nights he's been close to a triple double. So Gage Clark will get my performance of the week not. Yeah, very well deserved on his part. Uh, real quick before we wrap up, just because we are in that time of year, um, Cincinnati Bengals, Titans, who you got this week? Wow, the king is back. i got to go with the Titans. I'll take the Titans with you. 49ers, Packers? I'd like to see a rematch of Rams 49ers, so I'll, I'll take the Niners in, in Lambeau. And then I'm guessing you're taking the Rams over the Bucks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one person that's tired of seeing – 
Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Well, so real quick, I'll take the Packers and I'll take the Bucks. And then you got the Bills, Chiefs, kind of in our backyard here. I'm gonna make some Missourians mad, but I'm a Josh Allen fan. I'm gonna take the Bills in KC. I'll take the Chiefs, and that'll be our wrap up for the week. Just throwing in a little NFL because we're getting close to the Super Bowl. Thank you again for joining us. This was a good second episode. Hopefully, we'll be back next week. Our next week, our guests are actually going to be, it's going to be a roundtable with the Pacific Basketball Boys coaches. That'll be Coach Cody Bradfish, Coach Hart Hillhouse, and Coach Justin King all together. That'll be a fun group. Yeah, but don't go anywhere because we're going to be right back with wrestling head coach Jesse Knott. And we're back in studio here with head wrestling coach Jesse Knott joining us here for his interview. Coach, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. All right, so before we uh, dive right in to the program as it is now, uh, for some of you that do know, Jesse was also part of the program as a wrestler uh, in his days at high school here at PHS. He was 2007 state champion. So I'm just going to have Jesse maybe take us through some of that tournament, some moments that he remembers from that. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that was... That was kind of a big moment for me personally. You know, you don't want to necessarily talk about your high school days that much, but it's definitely a moment that'll that'll stand out for me as I, as I get older and in in this sport that has made me. And you know, you look at if I look back at that run, a lot of that credit goes back to my coaches and my teammates. We had a great team that year. Um, had Brandon Wisdom and and in the room along with Danny Acola and AJ Harris and Will White. We just had a, a great senior group. Justin Lawrence was in there, a younger guy for us then. And then I, of course, had my twin brother who was every day just beating the crap out of each other. That's how we get, that's how we got better. That's the mentality that we had. And, you know, that helped me grow as a, as a wrestler to, to make that run that entire year. You know, looking back at that tournament, it's it's a special kind of tournament. That's why I love going there every single year as a coach now. Because just knowing what that meant for me as a wrestler, I can I can relate to the kids and when they have that success down there. So yeah, and I remember getting to watch that because I was just a couple of years behind you in school. So it was fun to watch you and your brother kind of beat up on each other. Oh yeah. Uh, so the reason though, I I know a lot of coaches don't like to talk about their uh, themselves and stuff. But that's why I wanted to bring it up though. Is we talked about the accolades of the wrestling program, so many conference titles, district, uh, state runs with different guys. Um, taking over a program like this, did you feel any added pressure to take over something this strong? Well, yeah, of course I did. You know, Taking it over from, from Coach Shimza and, and what he had put in place and what, that, what him and Covert and Lucan had had in place when I was, when I was there as a wrestler and just seeing that, that continuation. It was just consistency year in year out of getting a medalist and then coming back and being a part of that coaching staff same thing same mentality so yeah when I take it over you know you got a little pressure you don't want to let let those guys down and 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 have the streak as we call it of the state medalist end with you um but at the same time you gotta you gotta see what the team is like and and have a reality check and know that you're going to have peaks and valleys, and you just got to continue to develop. Well, so then my other question then for you, though, is you took over soccer before wrestling, correct? So did yes. that help you with knowing a little bit about being a head coach? I think it did, yeah, without a doubt. You know, it kind of just knowing what the communication needs to be, what the paperwork and, and the officials' evaluations, all that kind of behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, having a routine for that kind of – that kind of uh, – extra work definitely helped prepare me when I took over the the wrestling team but overall I mean wrestling is that's been my life since I was six years old so teaching technique being in that room every day I mean that's that's what I'm used to that's what I love to do yeah so stuff that you're used to doing and love to do makes it a lot easier just yep. to jump in absolutely so this year's team now if we segue into this year's team is what we got uh, another conference championship last week congratulations on that thank you um, would you say the squad's trending the right way as we head towards the final stretch towards districts? I think it is. You know, we, we started the year, and I looked at our lineup. We, we lost – last year we had a couple really good 
really good seniors. And over the last couple years, we've had a great core group kind of come and go and graduate. And we lost them to graduation. And this was the first year really without any of those guys, those standout guys that you go into a tournament. We Like the last couple of years, I wouldn't say we had the greatest team, but I knew going into every tournament, I had the best wrestler in that tournament out of all weight classes. Um, so it was a little different. We didn't have a returning medalist. We didn't have a uh, for sure 100% you know they're going to get on the on the podium but I had I had a lot of hope for this team because I knew that we had guys who had been developing under those kids the last couple years and had the potential um, towards the beginning of the year we kind of got hit with injuries and, and different different little obstacles I didn't feel like we were up to our full strength kind of had a good first tournament but then it kind of got shaky there right before Christmas and it's been shaky ever since and that conference tournament, I mean, that was the first time that we really had everyone in the lineup. We were healthy. We went out. We performed. We got big wins from our big guys, from our good guys, um, and some key wins from some of kind of our role, role guys who are, who are filling in spots, picked up some huge clutch wins for us. So I think it is. I, you know, we're kind of hitting that sick bug again right now, which I think every program across the state is, and, and no matter what sport. But... You, you just have that sense that something special is going to happen with these guys when we get to the district tournament, and that's what that's what we work for. A conference title, it's like I told them, it's nice, but this program is different than other programs. We don't we don't go into a season looking for conference titles. We look for state medals, and that's what we work for every day. So, and then another question though that I had for you is, you kind of get something unique. You get to start a new program almost with the girls wrestling. <laughs> I mean, it's only been around a couple of years. Yeah. How is that to start up something new, pretty much? Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. It's 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 a lot of extra work. You know, this is it's kind of almost it, a lot of people see it as an exciting time, right? You start a new program, and it is. It's getting new, a new group of people interested in the sport that you love. It's difficult running two programs at once, and that's what they are. It's not girls wrestling in a in a boys sport. It's it's girls wrestling. And it's guys wrestling. And to focus the attention that you need on both programs by, with one person, that's, it's difficult. Um, our numbers haven't been great. Uh, we, I think we only, have, we, well, we, we only have three. We had somewhat like seven last year and I think three the year before. So our numbers have been low. And I think hopefully in this next off season, we can change some coaching stuff up to where we can have a full head coach that focus all their attention. I think that's the key to, to growing that program. You look at all the good girls programs throughout the area, they have a separate coaching staff that can focus on recruiting that athlete and focus on technique for their style. They're, they're two different styles, they are. Um, and having their own practices. It, I think if we're gonna grow that program, that's the direction we have to go. But. Working with those girls has been it's been awesome because they they fall in love with the sport. They soak up the information. Um, they really do enjoy winning. I mean, it's it's good to see the joy in their face when they when they get a big win. So it it's refreshing from time to time, um, but but difficult at the same time. So. Well, to build off of building a program, we'll talk about your kind of your feeder system as we do in our Riverbend Roundup. We even mentioned the wrestling program last week on our show that uh, Coach Ken Grody leads, but it's also probably a little bit more of that as far as all the way down. That's going to help, too, with the girls, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Grody does – I can't say enough about the job that that guy does for us at the middle school level. That's – you know, we don't have just a couple, like 10 kids. we got 30-plus kids down there, and he's – rounding them all up and, and getting them and teaching them the foundation so that when they come into our room uh, after those two years, they they have a, a background to the sport that, that I can then build off of. So he does an incredible job, not only of teaching that stuff, but, but getting our numbers up. He's pivotal to our numbers staying where they need to be to make us a competitive lineup in years to come. Um, and then even below that, we you know at the Little League level, we, we have a little league here at Pacific that has been around since I was a kid, started by Coach Lucan, 
call him the godfather of Pacific Wrestling. He's always around. I mean, just an incredible human being. Uh, but taking that program over, along with running those two programs at the high school, it was difficult. So reached out, and I got the Wisdom Brothers. Brandon let wrestled for us when we were seniors. Uh, was a state medalist, two-time state medalist. Probably should have won it as a senior. And then his brother Bradley is in the area, so he came over and, and those two have been running. Bradley was a three-time state champ from Farmington. So, you know, when I look at who we have at each level, if, if we keep these people in place, we're going to be a program to be talked about here in the next couple of years as, as that foundation is built and we continue to build. Yeah, and it sounds like with all those kind of big names as far as in state history here at Pacific helping us out, it's going to help keep this legacy of Pacific just kind of keep going and going on the wrestling right. side is what we're hoping. That's the plan. That's the plan. You know, you got you, on top of all those guys up at the high school, I got Austin Rep who helps me too. He's my number one assistant with the varsity guys. Um, <clears throat> Two-time state champ for us as well. So, yeah, we got a lot of success in a coaching staff, and that's our plan is to continue that success that's been going on for the last two, plus, two decades, just continuing it year in, year out. Yeah, and those of you that haven't seen the old gym, they redid the wrestling side of things. So now it's just we're even more spread out. It takes up a whole wall pretty much to just get in all the state medalists, not even counting conference and yeah. other things that we have racked up over the years. Yeah, yeah. The state medals, that's something that that we're proud of, and, and it's our legacy, you know. Make a statement. That's what that's our slogan for our for our program, and I don't think anything makes a bigger statement to the rest of the school and to this district than that wall, with all the names that we put up over the last 20 years. And then uh, you guys have a tournament tomorrow or the day this airs, but yeah. on Saturday, want to anything about that? I know there's several teams coming down. I think 12 teams. Yeah, we got 12 teams coming in. Um, kind of put through this tournament together last year with the COVID year, we lost a tournament and. Instead of trying to find a tournament, every, every tournament was making cuts last year. So I decided, you know what, I'll just reach out to some coaches and, and try to make a good class three tournament going into this, to the postseason. Um, so I reached out to some teams and, and it's grown. It's a little bit bigger this year. We got Whitfield coming in, who was the class three state champs last year. Um, Summit is always, always a competitive team. Rockwood Summit, they'll be here. Washington's got a great lineup this year. And then we're bringing in, last year we had Bolivar up here. This year we're bringing up Carl Junction, which is pretty much near Oklahoma, Kansas border. So they got a long trip, but they're, they're a tough team. And, and that's the competition we need. I think that's, what, that's another thing that makes our program a little different. We search out the best opponents. We don't have an easy schedule. We, we compete. You know, my best guy on our team our best guys have about seven or eight losses apiece. And it's not because they're they're getting beat by no names. They're getting beat by good kids because that's the schedule that we have to have in order to do the things we want to do in February. That, um, that probably just helps build them up for districts and it, state runs. It run does. It, you're going to see those kids. It, you see those kids, and then the other kids that were at their level at the beginning of the year, they – they kind of look down upon them, right? They step out there with a lot more confidence because they've seen bigger and better. Um, so it, it's kind of a psyche thing, too. And it's something that all the best programs in the state have done. They, they search out the best competition statewide, not just in the local area. And then districts are at Farmington in February. I don't have the exact date on me right Fe now. February 11th and 12th, yeah, we'll be down at Farmington, which is our typical district tournament, Farmington and uh, Hillsboro. Hillsboro is nails this year so you got probably the either the state runner up or the state champs in that team uh, farmington's always a solid team rockwood washington um sykeston some of those southwest missouri or southeast rather uh, missouri teams are what we'll we'll see in our district well coach uh thank you for joining us I hope next week, whenever I'm reading our review, I got a lot to read about wrestling again. Yeah, absolutely. So far, it's been a long list. It's me and Coach Brown have to take all, take turns on just finishing it off because it's yeah. so long. So, once again, thank you for joining us on our second episode of Pacific Indians Chatter. We'll have to have you back on. Maybe we'll get some uh, good 
uh, news out of districts when we get you back on for a little bit talk about that absolutely appreciate right. you having me thank you thanks and that was head coach jesse not joining us in today for our interview uh, thank you for joining. Next week, we will have the Pacific Basketball Roundtable. I'll be joined with all three coaches, JV, varsity, and freshman coach. That is Cody Bradfish, Hart Hill House, and Justin King joining in studio. Until next week, we'll see you.